Hi, I'm Ariel. You're watching She Wants the Diction. And today I'm going to be talking about the direction I want to take my reading for 2021. So obviously this is not a very original video idea. I've seen a lot of people making these videos lately. And, you know, hopefully someone will find this interesting. I don't know, but we're just going to have a little chat about ideas that I have for how I want to read this year. So I'm going to start off by looking at some of the goals that I set last year. And this, I didn't make a video about this or anything. I just made a post to my Instagram. So let's see what I said on there. Reduce videos to once every two weeks, but increase quality slash variety. And I did actually reduce the amount I was posting um, because I had been posting once a week for over a year, I believe. And that was actually really, really hard. Like I didn't have trouble coming up, coming up with ideas or anything, but it was hard to keep that consistency of always having a video to, to publish at 8 a.m. at this time. But I think it was really good because it forced me to have to like put out things like whether or not they were perfect. I just had to have something to put out. And I think forcing myself to do that over and over again and kind of like helped me get rid of a little bit of my perfectionism. Like this idea that a video has to be perfect or the idea has to be like perfectly formed before I can like take action. Like I feel like that's something that keeps a lot of people from like making art or making a channel or whatever is just like they're too perfectionistic and want to have like super tight control over everything and make sure that they get it exactly right. And the other thing I said was that I was going to start writing captions and descriptions for all my videos. Now I definitely failed at this one. I have been writing captions for more videos. Usually the shorter ones that are honestly easier, less time consuming to caption, it's already extremely time consuming to edit, but I want to have my videos like be accessible to people who can't hear. And so it's kind of a, it's kind of a balance that I've struck of doing like every other one or something and just like the shorter videos I'll caption, but then the longer ones I definitely don't. If I do go back to posting once a week, I will definitely, definitely have way more of a struggle with captioning. Part of the reason I reduced to two weeks was so that I would have more time to think about video ideas and caption videos. And honestly, like that's not what the YouTube algorithm wants. Like I think when I was posting once a year, like YouTube really liked that but it's not about what YouTube likes. It's, it's about what works for me and what works for my channel and for you guys. So I think my tendency would be to say like that I failed because I didn't caption every single video, but I don't think I did because caption, I went from captioning no videos to now I'm at least captioning some. So I don't think that setting that goal was in any way a failure. Like the ideal would be for every single one of my videos to be captioned. And that's going to keep being a goal until I can make it the reality. As far as descriptions, I feel like I have been writing better, better descriptions. I will list every single book that I mention in my videos, which I notice a lot of people don't do. And when people don't list all of the books that they talk about in their video, I get really annoyed when I have to like pause and try to like Google the book that they're talking about because it's not just written in their description or try to like go back and find where they talked about a book or like put up the book cover. And so I feel like I've gotten really, really good about like listing that and also just like throwing in a one or two sentence uh, description or just chit chatting or whatever in the description. So it's not like totally blank if anyone ever happens to look at it. The other thing I had on here was learn how to make better thumbnails. And I mean, I don't know that I've like advanced in my like Photoshop GIMP skills at all. I feel like I've started to try to take like specifically take a picture for the thumbnail, which is like the first step, right? And also I just kind of like have started like doodling on my thumbnails. Honestly, I don't know what to do about the thumbnails. Like I hate having the cliche thumbnail where it's like every thumbnail is just a picture of me holding something, books and my face. But yeah, I don't know, un unless you just make it like plain text or plain book covers, which I have done sometimes. Like I don't really know like how to do thumbnails or like what a thumbnail should be. So I just like do what I want. The other goal I had was to track slash review every book I read. And I definitely did that this year. This was the first year I ever tracked every single book that I read. And I love that I did this because now I know that my like top three categories that I read in were LGBTQ+, um, race studies, and feminism. So that was really awesome to learn. Like I learned that I read a lot of memoirs. I learned that I read a lot of poetry. Like these are things that I kind of like know, but I didn't like see the stats like right in front of me. And so it was really, really cool to like see those stats for the first time and figure out the places that I like to read the most. So those were my goals for last year. Obviously this year I am going to be continuing my Queer All Year project. This is something that me and Lydia came up with together and it was kind of 
a mission to read six queer books that we kind of pick out at the beginning of the year and then try to make it a goal to read them at some time throughout the year. And I think I read four of the six things that I wanted to read and obviously the two that I didn't read are going to be rolling over and then I'll be picking four more. I'll do a separate video on that um, for those that are interested, but our, our goal was to kind of make it a project where it's like sort of a hashtag thing, um, sort of like a reading challenge, like very casual and like get people to like join in. And the whole reason for us making it was because I feel like queer books really only tend to get read around like Pride Month or people really only care about queer books around Pride Month. So our whole goal was to be like, hey, we're still here. <laughs> we're here for the, for the entire rest of the year besides just Pride Month, like we're still queer. And so, yeah, we kind of just kind of made that like a personal, personal project, I guess. So this year, one of my big goals is to pick more of my own books and read more things I'm interested in, which are kind of two separate goals, but they're kind of like slightly different. <laughs> but let me kind of explain what I mean. Cause you guys are probably like, um, Ariel, you do read things that you're interested in. Like you read all kinds of queer books. You read all kinds of fucking feminist stuff. You read all kinds of black authors. Like, what are you talking about? You read stuff you're interested in. I, I obviously I have those big broad ranging interests that like you guys already know, but there are also a ton of other topics that I'm really, really interested in that I feel like I haven't like fully explored. And so just to give you an idea, I wrote down tech. I wrote down gifted education because I've been getting really, really into, I mean, although I didn't talk about any of them on my channel, I've been getting really into reading books about like the gifted education system and the gifted education programs, which are programs that like I grew up in and personally like really, really impacted like my schooling and my life, both for good and for ill. And so I'm kind of, I've kind of been reading a lot of books about like adult giftedness. And I feel like it's given me a lot of perspective like on my life personally. And also like there's a lot of racism within the, well, the education system, but then specifically within the gifted education system and created kind of one of these situations where like I was one of the only ones that was like non-white because the testing and the idea of IQ testing is very biased as opposed to like multiple intelligence theory. And I, I don't know, giftedness is just a subject that really, really fascinates me, I think because it's something that so impacted my life. So I definitely like wanna go deeper on that. Another subject is climate change. Um, obviously we know that climate change is real. I don't know a ton of in-depth information about it. So I would like to read more. This year I read a couple books on disability. The best one being Disability Visibility, which was like this anthology um, of different essays all written by different people with different disabilities and that really opened my eyes to just like the amount of fucking ableism that is everywhere. Then I also listened to the audiobook of Care Work and so I really want to continue furthering my development like on that front because I feel like disability justice and ableism is something that really really gets overlooked and is still really really prevalent even within like marginalized communities. So that's something I want to continue to look into. I'm also wanting to read more books specifically on atheism because I realized I've never really read any books on atheism. For those of you that don't know, I'm an agnostic atheist. I was raised in a Christian fundamentalist household. And so yeah, <laughs> religion, not really my thing anymore. But I know a lot about um, Christianity and the Bible, let me tell you that. So I'm wanting to read more of the very popular books by like well-known atheists. And another interesting thing about atheism is like a lot of the well-known atheists tend to be I hate to say it, but just like asshole white men. I like, I feel like atheism has this reputation for like being these very dickish condescending white men because of those are the ones that you always hear about like fucking uh, Richard Dawkins. Like I can't even think, I can't even think of the other ones right now, but like those are the types of faces that you always see representing atheism. And so I'm really interested to read books specifically from the black atheist perspective because that's a perspective that's much more rare and probably a perspective that I could connect with more. But I also want to want to read like the sort of seminal works on atheism so I can kind of have a touchstone and some sort of idea like what's happening there. I also feel like, you know, I'm not just an atheist. Like I feel like I'm like humanist in a way. Like it's not enough to just like discard God and discarding God doesn't mean you have to like become some type of dick. Like I feel like you can discard religion and still care about people and like social justice and things like that. So eh, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm wanting to read more books about that. And then another subject is also like this intersection of like black people and horror because I've spoken multiple times about how like I don't really like horror. And so I'm wanting to investigate like the history of black people and horror 
what black people writing horror can look like. And so I've got a couple different books on my radar. I've got The Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Lavelle. And I've also got this one I heard about on the podcast Code Switch, which is Horror Noir, Blacks in American Horror Films from 1890s to Present. And so those are just some examples of books that talk about black people in horror, black people creating horror that I'm really interested in. And so I'll probably be doing that hopefully around Halloween. And as far as what I mean by picking more of my own books, I know the whole point of the book community is to kind of like see what other people are reading and like discover new books and all that kind of thing. But I think also the book community kind of tends to become this echo chamber where the same five books get passed around and like everyone is reading them. And so it can kind of become this thing where like you're insulated and you're not really seeing books outside of that. Like I love that I've been in this community and, and I've been able to find so many great books from other people's recommendations, but that doesn't change the fact of, I miss that feeling of like picking out my own book. Like before I was definitely reading a lot less things that I liked as opposed to now, I'm definitely finding a lot more things that I enjoy. But yeah, I, I kind of miss, I guess, choosing books for myself and really seeking them out and taking my own time to go through the library catalog or browse through my library or look at lists of new releases rather than just having people tell me what they're reading and then getting ideas from that. So I went through my library catalog one night looking through the sci-fi because that's something else I wanna do this year is try to read more science fiction. And I found Tell the Machine Good Night by Katie Williams. And obviously I thought this title was like really intriguing and I liked the cover and the premise sounded interesting. It was about like this woman who works for sort of like a startup and their whole deal is they have this like machine called Apricity that makes you recommendations on what you can do to like be happier or like be your happiest self. And some of the recommendations are pretty outlandish and it's sort of about her life and the lives of the people around her and how they interact with this machine. And it's very Black Mirror-esque. And honestly, it ended up being a kind of a letdown for me because it had a, a fantastic premise and I really think it didn't really go anywhere. But still, like I took the risk and I read something that I normally wouldn't read that I didn't see recommended by anyone anywhere. And it's it's still kind of fun. Like, yeah, this was a dud for me, but I don't know. Like I kind of, I, I miss the risk, I guess you could say, or like just discovering things for myself. And I also think it'll make my channel better if I'm reading more things than just the same five things that everyone else is reading. Like I can still read the things everyone else is reading if I want but I can also read the things I'm personally interested in that may not be as popular. Okay, the next goal of mine is to read all of the books by the founders of Black Lives Matter. The founders of Black Lives Matter are three black women, Alicia Garza, Opal Tometi, and Patrice Cullors. This really came about because I was listening to an audiobook uh, by Mark Lamont Hill called We Still Here, Pandemic, Policing, Protest, and Possibility. And this just came out, um, like last November. It was a really short audiobook that sort of provided a deeper analysis and context of the Black Lives Matter movement, um, especially in relation to the COVID-19 crisis, which we know has disproportionately affected poor black people. And there was this amazing section where he talked about how black feminists are who is going to lead the movement. And I'm just, I'm just gonna go ahead and read it because it's so, so incredible what he said. Black Lives Matter is rooted not only in the black radical tradition, but also in the black feminist tradition. As Barbara Ransby reminds us in her brilliant book, Making All Black Lives Matter, we often acknowledge the first, but too often ignore the second. Black feminism is the political, intellectual, and moral anchor of our freedom struggle. Black women, and specifically black feminists, have consistently theorized, organized, and struggled for the most ambitious and inclusive freedom dreams possible. Radical black feminists have not only struggled to end patriarchy, but to produce a world devoid of all oppression. The sad irony, of course, is that black women have engaged in these inclusive forms of world making at the same time they have been placed at the bottom of the social ladder. At the same time that black women have fought to free all of us, we have continued to fight for a world that prioritizes the lives of cisgendered, black, heterosexual men. And I cannot tell you how refreshing that was to read from a black man. It made me really think. I read so many anti-racist books last year, so many texts on race and race analysis and so many texts by black authors. But did I read the books put out by the actual founders of the Black Lives Matter movement? No, I did not. And so it really made me stop and think and question why do I like know this movement so well, feel like I am so involved and invested in it, yet I have not read anything by the women who created it. And so that led to me wanting to 
read both of these books. The Purpose of Power, How We Come Together When We Fall Apart by Alicia Garza and When They Call You a Terrorist uh, by Patrice Cullors. So I've already completed When They Call You a Terrorist and it was extremely emotional, absolutely phenomenal, just, just blew me away. Like it was incredible. I could not believe that I had not already read it and looked at it. I feel like I've seen people mention it, but I just didn't realize what it was or who it was by. And I guess, I don't know, like it just <laughs> like completely oblivious or something. Like I, I don't know why I didn't like listen to it sooner. But anyways, in this book, she just explains in such a personal, intimate way, how institutionalized racism shaped every aspect of her life. And some of the ways that it did that were through police brutality, um, the disproportionate incarceration of black men slash fathers, um, and the lack of access to healthcare for the poor and mentally ill. Her brother, mentally ill. Her dad, incarcerated. And it was just heartbreaking, yet sadly relatable. It's just racism infiltrated every aspect of her and her loved one's lives is just overwhelming. If you want to know exactly why and how Black Lives Matter got started, you need to read this. And I can't believe that How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi, a book I did not like for the most part, and whose author thinks that reverse racism is a thing, which no. I don't know why that was the book everyone ran to in June instead of this fucking book because that should have this should have been the book that everyone was reading and running to and honestly this would have been the book like that that i would recommend over everything like forget white fragility forget all that shit you need this <laughs> and i just think it's ridiculous that of course we ran first to a black man rather than a black woman's perspective the, the woman who started the movement and it just really got me thinking and i really want to read this passage where she specifically talks about the way that the founders of this movement have been erased. And it's kind of long, so here we go. And despite it being part of the historical record that it is always women who do work, even as men get the praise, it takes a long time for us to occur to most reporters in the mainstream. The fact seems ever more exacerbated in our day and age, when presence on Twitter, when the number of followers one has, can supplant the everyday unheralded work of those who, by virtue of that work, may not have time to tweet constantly, or sharpen and own their personal brand so that it is an easily sellable commodity. Like the women who organized, strategized, marched, cooked, typed up, and did the work to ensure the civil rights movement, women whose names go unspoken, unknown. So too did this dynamic unfold as a nation began to realize that we were a movement. Opal, Alicia, and I never wanted or needed to be the center of anything. We were purposeful about decentralizing our role in the work, but neither did we want nor deserve to be erased. I can tell you it was painful to watch the story of Black Lives Matter told without us, but the truth is that it was enraging. And so I think that kind of expresses how we're willing to look almost everywhere else but at the black women who, the black feminists who are the source, who oftentimes lead these movements, who create the hashtags and organize the rallies, and, and it's just, it's amazing to me. It reminds me of how almost everything black gets fucking appropriated by someone else and used for a profit and we're just exploited like resources to be mined for other people's benefit and I hate that and I hated that in some way I was I was sort of complicit to that because it's taken me so long to get around to to reading these women's books and so I've sort of already have completed that goal I will be moving on to I think Alicia Garza's book next one of the other specific goals that I have is to read at least one Zora Neale Hurston book this year I've read one of one book of hers per year the past two years and it's always really really good and it's always a really really emotional experience like i'm pretty sure i can only really handle reading one of her books per year so that's another goal i have I'll, it'll probably be dust tracks on a road i'd also like to read more sequels and more things by authors that i've already read and like for example i would like to read a little life by hanya yanagihara because i loved her debut novel so much um, I would like to read Metallic Love. This is the sequel to uh, Silver Metal Lover by Tanith Lee. And I never never got around to reading the second one, so I'd like to do that. I would like to read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley because it's quite overdue. And she is kind of like supposedly the first female writer of science fiction. I don't really know if that's true, but that's what I've heard. And it's a classic that I really keep neglecting and really need to get on. I'm also going to continue reading all of Octavia Butler's work. Reading her Pattern Master series this year did not go so well. Like I read the books in, in order of publishing date, which I think I should have read them chronologically instead. 
And also I had trouble getting access to the books, like my library did not own them, so I had to wait for them to come in on interlibrary loan. And they would come in like months apart from each other so that I had already forgotten what had happened in the previous book. And so it was really difficult for me to like connect the whole storyline and like get the whole picture. And so I kind of gave up on it with the, when the pandemic hit because they weren't even doing interlibrary loans and like the library was closed. And so that just kind of fell to the wayside. Pattern Master also has some pretty poor writing in it. Like I feel like it's, it's one of the first things that she wrote. So some of the writing is definitely like not up to the par of like say Parable of the Sower or her Xenogenesis trilogy. Like I, I don't know. I think I'm going to try to start over and read uh, maybe Kindred or Fledgling instead since those... Kindred seems to be like the crowd favorite, so I'll probably go with that. I would also potentially like to start exploring Lovecraft. And I know, huge, ridiculously huge racist, like terrible. But the thing is, in, in like science fiction and horror, I feel like the thing that I do really like is like cosmic horror. And he's like, you know, sort of the originator of the deal. And so I'm like wanting to read some of his works, but at the same time, like not wanting to deal with like racist crap like I want to know the origins so that I can read other things like about Lovecraft and like inspired by Lovecraft stories but yeah I'm just hoping that it's not like too much I kind of have an idea of where to start now but we'll just see how I feel and then finally I would like to read some books about sex work this came about um because of a mistake that I made basically I a few weeks ago had reposted a meme on like insta stories which I don't even remember what the meme was, but I had commented something about it saying, yeah, I totally get why these girls do OnlyFans because like it's it's got to be better than like busting your ass for, you know, minimum wage. And, you know, if I could just snap a quick booty pic and make money and I didn't have a problem with like myself being all out there and my business all out there, then like I'd totally do that too because it seems easier than breaking my back for this or something like that. And basically someone messaged me and kind of told me that it seemed like I had a lot of misconceptions about like sex work and they were just like it's it's actually not easy like you like you seem to think it is and also like basically kind of challenged me they were like you're a reader so you should read about the topic and I was like you're right I I'm speaking out of my ignorance here I don't know what it's like to be a fucking sex worker I don't know what it's like to be on OnlyFans I just have this idea I guess I guess kind of we all do because honestly I got a lot of people like inboxing me and reacting to it like positively. So I was like, okay, a lot of people apparently have this misconception or this idea of what sex work or like internet cam work, whatever you want to call it is. And so I was like, well, if I could read some books to kind of correct that and sort of correct course and educate myself, well, that would be great. So I kind of got called out and I was like, yeah, you know what? I am speaking out of my ignorance. So what if I went and educated myself at the source? So I kind of wrote down some books I did read The End of Policing, which besides talking about the criminalization of homelessness, which was fantastic, it also talked a little bit about the criminalization of sex work, but I would like to read some books specifically on the topic. So I have written down Cam Girl, Revolting Prostitutes, Playing the Whore, Watching Porn, and Overcome. And so I think that's a pretty good like basis of books to start with. Um, just a personal goal of mine, since obviously like I don't know what I'm talking about. So that is kind of the direction that I'm wanting to take with my reading. Um, my ideas about that anyways. <laughs> I don't know how it's actually going to go because I'm terrible at planning and sticking to things, but yeah, that's it. If you want to let me know how you're planning to read this year, feel free to drop me a comment. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for listening and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace. Well,